Hey everyone, Simon here. Today we're going to look at the chart of one of my favorite painters. I've loved him since childhood, and that's Vincent van Gogh. Um, and we're going to look at his chart in particular through the lens of relationships, because it is in fact the striking failure of his relationships that drove him to... Um, to despondency and desperation. But before we get to that, um, I'm going to actually shut off my camera. Just wanted to say hi. And so we could pay full attention to the uh, the artist. So the chart of Vincent van Gogh is an incredible example of very powerful mixed karmas because on the one hand he has combinations for fame and 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 success even and on the other hand he has terrible uh combinations for uh, a difficult life and as all things <clears throat> in vedic astrology it all plays out everything plays out people i often get emails from folks who say hey i have this combo but then I have this kind of opposite feeling combo. Does that mean they cancel out? The answer is a resounding no. If you have combinations for being a millionaire and also combinations for being very poor, both will happen to you over the course of the lifetime. And in Vedic astrology, we have the diagnosis, the karma, you could say, of the lifetime. And then we have the, the sort of... Um, series of of dashas that are called dashas or pieces of when each piece of that karma is going to play out so the millionaire karma can play out and the poverty karma can play out the vibrant health karma can play out and the um the sickness and disease karma all according to the schedule which is called the vimshotri dasha in vedic astrology so vincent let's get into vincent van gogh's chart um now i'm showing both the north and the south indian i'm going to switch a little bit between both because i want to show you this very special placement of a very vedic thing called gulika now i've made videos about gulika before and gulika is especially important in charts of depression depression uh, suicidal ideation and overall kind of a sense of fe feeling like you're living under a shadow feeling like you're living under a rain cloud this is all gulika this is the video um, you can just kind of google or youtube my name simon chikoisky gulika i have made um, a number uh, uh, at least a couple of videos about the power of this shadow planet it's not really a planet except um in the very greek sense of the word which planetes means something that moves through the sky so in that sense the sun is a planet the moon is a planet comets are planets etc but gulika is a mathematical calculation based on saturn so i like to call gulika saturn's shadow and here is the secret to interpreting Gulika. Some people, uh, if you go to your options, calculation options, some people take the beginning portion of Gulika, and this is what uh, Parashara, Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra says, take the beginning portion of Gulika. But some people, and all, probably for good reason, take the ending portion. I take the entire thing. This is secret number one, meaning... The beginning of Gulika, Gulika is like a hora. It is a period of time. And I take the entire span of Gulika as being that shadow. So if you imagine Shani, Saturn, having a shadow, right? If this is Saturn, that shadow has a span. And the beginning to the ending portion is called Gulika. Um, it's not just a point, okay? Anything that falls, now th this is according to me, of course, and, 
some people will continue to take Gulika as the beginning portion, and that is as it's written in the text. Some people take it as the ending. In the case of Van Gogh, if we do the ending portion, Gulika actually falls in his second house at 11 degrees. If we take the beginning portion, um, let me go back here. It falls at 23 degrees of the previous. And I'll talk about whether this ascendant is correct or not in a second. But in either case, you can see that uh, Van Gogh's ascendant falls within the shadow of Gulika. All right. So secret number one is take the span of Gulika as a range where there is a shadow on the person. And if a luminary like the moon or the sun or the ruler of the ascendant or the ascendant itself, most importantly, most importantly, falls within that shadow and is further afflicted, in this case, by a debilitated Saturn, now we have a recipe for problems, specifically health issues. Now, what a, what does a shadow do? There, the physical symptoms, as I talk about in this video, are very real, um, namely a, a, a low vitamin D. Every client I've had uh, who has Gulika very close to their ascendant has suffered from a vitamin D deficiency. And, um, and, and, and you can see in some of the comments here, I received that red light therapy, summer sun is, you could see, I'm, I, I didn't plan this. I'm just looking at this right now. Incredibly healing. Thank you for sharing you guys who have this. Um, and um, I do recommend you watch this video for more on the power of Gulika. I'm not going to um, linger here for the whole video because there's more to look at in Vincent's chart. But number one, his ascendant falls in the span of Gulika and is aspected by two malefics, Mars and Saturn. In addition to which, Saturn is the eighth lord. Let me change it back to here. Saturn being the eighth lord and Mars being the sixth lord. This is a double, triple, quadruple whammy. Meaning, Gulika on the Ascendant, one. Aspected by Saturn, two. Aspected by Mars, three. In addition to the Eighth Lord and the Sixth Lord. In addition to the ascent ruler of the Ascendant also being with the Eighth Lord. Okay, and a debilitated Eighth Lord on top. A very malicious one. So right from the beginning, the ascendant, oh, and number five or number six, I lost track, is the fact that there is another shadow on his ascendant, which is Rahu, the node of the, of the moon. If you've watched my video, Decoding Your Life Map with Vedic Astrology, you will recall, that is my introduction to Vedic Astrology, you will recall that having Rahu in the ascendant makes a person an outsider. Outsider Dharma types are never accepted where they are. And in fact, everywhere Van Gogh went, he was seen as a pariah. And to the point where one city, Arl, uh, where he lived in, it's called Arl. <laughs> That's my Texas pronunciation of Arl. Uh, Arl. Um, they signed a petition. The villagers signed a petition to kick him out. That's how much they, he was hated. So being an outsider dharma type, and having the shadow of Rahu on your ascendant is hard enough without also having Gulika and also the sixth Lord Mars and the eighth Lord Saturn aspecting. So this was a gloomy Saturn, kind of darkish Gulika and impetuous Mars type of person. But the story doesn't stop there. And I hope I'm not boring you so far, but we have to understand why uh, Van Gogh died very early before he was 40. And uh, he died in the period of his moon. Now, if you look at his moon, his moon is debilitated, unaspected by any planet, and with no planets in Kendras from itself. It does have Jupiter in the second from itself. Otherwise, this would be a full-fledged Kema Druma Yoga. However, that, K that Jupiter is so hidden it's in the shadow of Ketu that it almost doesn't function at all. 
And in fact, there is a principle as taught by Dr. Chuduk, Dr. K.S. Chuduk, um, the author of dozens of books on medical astrology and, and, and others, that says the seventh house from Gulika. Remember now, Gulika is here in the Ascendant. The seventh lord from Gulika becomes a very malefic planet. And in this case, Jupiter is the seventh lord from Gulika. He is also the Madaka lord. So Jupiter, and he's also a um, Kendradipati, meaning he, the dosha of owning two Kendras in a horoscope. So Jupiter, even though he aspects the Lord of the Ascendant and the Ascendant, here is unable to produce the full goodness because of the doshas. And furthermore, he's unable to help the Kemadruma situation that his moon is in. To finish it all, moon is debilitated in a trikastana, the house six. Remember, houses six, eight, and 12 are the worst of the horoscope. And um, uh, let's see here. Now, this Jupiter is also the period where Van Gogh killed himself in his moon Jupiter period. And get this. He began now. Why didn't why didn't he do it in Moon Rahu? Well, Moon Rahu was the period when he started going mad and and having real um, mental problems that today probably could have been addressed. And I'm going to talk about the remedies. I'm going to talk about how, if we were around then, if you or I as Vedic uh, astrologers were there and we had his confidence, how we could help. Because perhaps we could, perhaps we could not. I mean, that that's debatable. But we could have perhaps, even if we couldn't extend his life, we could perhaps make it a better quality of life. And this is, I, I truly believe this, that, that this is possible. And I feel that he didn't have recourse to the tools that, you know, certainly modern medicine would have had. Um, he had venereal diseases and very painful treatment for that. He had epilepsy. He had severe depression, I'm sure. Uh, although I'm not a, psycho a psychiatrist to um, diagnose him, qualified to diagnose him, just based on his life events, but based on what I just described with Gulika and what I'm going to descri further describe about his moon, he could have had recourse. But beyond modern medicine, the recourse to the Vedic remedies, I think could have helped him tremendously. The very And the very simplest one would have been to simply increase his vitamin D, whether through fish oil or uh, exposure to the sun, etc. But, but there are others that we'll talk about at the end. So to continue with the moon, he killed himself in moon Jupiter on the day that Rahu in transit came to its exact position in the ascendant. He, the madness, in, in essence, had come full circle and he shot himself. Uh, in but So in Moon Rahu, he began to, to lose his faculties. And in Moon Jupiter, he, was, uh, he shot himself. Jupiter proving itself as a full modica or killer, being the Lord of the Seventh. But not just the Lord of the Seventh. Here it's also a full badaka planet. In, in especially in KP astrology, the Badaka becomes, but even if you don't pay attention to Badaka, Jupiter here is under the full influence of the nodes. Jupiter is furthermore in the heart of the black hole at the center of this galaxy by longitude. It is in at about three degrees Mula, two, two and a half degrees uh, Sagittarius, but sidereally very close to the heart of the Milky Way galaxy, the darkest point in the chart, many believe, what the Mayans called Shibalba, the entrance, the crack into hell, the entrance into hell. So a very dark place his Jupiter is in. His Jupiter is the dispositor of the seventh house from Gulika. This is also a very bad thing for health, as per Dr. K.S. Chuduk. 
and Jupiter is with K2, and it's a Madhika, and it's a Kendra Adipati Dosha planet, meaning it's the ruler of two Kendras, two um, angular houses in a horoscope. These are all very Vedic Sanskrit terms. If you're not familiar with them, we have there are plenty of classes on YouTube. I have many free classes as well where you can learn this stuff. But um, so Jupiter here, even though it's in the second from the moon, canceling technically what's called the Kemadruma Yoga, I feel like he doesn't cancel it. And this is a Kemadruma like moon. Why? Because it is fully debilitated. It is in a Trika house, a house 6, 8, or 12. And it is something called Gandanta, meaning at the end of a fire sign, sorry, at the end of a water sign and the beginning on the of a of a fire sign. It's right at the end. That's a very unstable position. So this very unstable moon combined with everything I just talked about, the ascendant, gives a very bleak picture. Now, on the other hand, if you just look at the chart itself now by the way why do we think this is the correct ascendant because 29 degrees four minutes later would make him a cancer ascendant okay a cancer ascendant four minutes later uh four minutes of time less than one degree of longitude it could be i'm not going to debate the merits or demerits of his, of his being a cancer ascendant but not much will change with respect to it being influenced by Gulika, because it's fully in the Gulika shadow. Um, or this part, the fact that at 29 degrees of Gemini is the star Pollux. It is the Yogatara of Punarvasu Nakshatra. Yogatara means the ruling star or the... Um, the uh, active uh, star within one of the 27 Vedic constellations. And that this one is called Punarvasu, uh, is the Vedic constellation. The star is Pollux. Now, Pollux is the immortal. And whenever this degree, 29 degrees of Gemini, is conjunct something important in your chart, in this case, it's his ascendant or it's your sun or moon or Venus or your 10th cusp or whatever it is, it will tend to make that thing immortal. Meaning it'll extend its life. Now, why didn't extend his lifespan? Well, we've looked at the reasons, but his name is now immortal and he is arguably the most famous artist in the world more famous than Picasso, more famous than, you know, Gauguin, the, the jerk that, you know, prompted a lot of his uh, episode, uh, problematic episodes, uh, or, you know, you name it. Arguably, Van Gogh is the most famous artist in the world. And that will come from these very powerful planets in his 10th house. Now, interestingly, and I won't go into the fact that he has an exalted Venus in the 10th, a Digbala, meaning a directionally strong Mars, and a Digbala, directionally strong Sun. So three first-tier strength planets in his house of name and fame. But wait, Simon, you're going to say, he wasn't famous in his day. In fact, he was miserable. People laughed at him. He never sold legitimately sold any paintings his brother bought the paintings that he made to try to support him he was utterly rejected by society so how do you explain this with such you know yogas in 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 the 10th house or so you know potentially powerful combinations well and also in the 11th you can say you know mercury is the lord of the first and saturn is the lord of the ninth in the house, the 11th house, gives a dana, wealth-creating yoga, and so on and on. Here's secret number two, ladies and gentlemen. When the ascendant and or the moon are heavily afflicted, this creates what in Vedic terms in Sanskrit is called yoga bhanga. 
Now, yoga, sorry, bhanga, is the breaking of yogas or, or opportunities. And in fact, in Van Gogh's life, he had massive opportunities. He was given a position in uh, at, at art dealerships by his wealthy uncle and basically given a, a free pass. All he had to do was tell rich people, oh, yes, you have such great taste and here is a, the most expensive painting and you should buy that. Instead, he, he argued with them. He said, you have no taste. You don't deserve this. He was argumentative and he, he was a terrible salesperson. <laughs> Even though the ruler of the Ascendant in the 11th, he was in sales for a while and he did okay for a while, but he couldn't do it forever. Why? Because his own personality didn't allow him to play the game. He was an outsider, Rahu. He had darkness in him, Gulika, Saturn. His mind was unstable, moon debilitated, Gandanta in a in Adustana. And yet he had opportunities over and over. And for his whole life, he was supported by his younger brother. His younger brother sent him money, bought his paintings and so forth. But this principle of yoga bhanga is the breaking of yogas. Nevertheless, if we extend his lifespan, because he died in, um, in his moon in 1890, in the 19th century, guys. He didn't even live to the 20th century. And yet, here's a very interesting thing. In the 20th century, when he ran his Jupiter period, now all the things I said about Jupiter still apply, but remember, astrology is cumulative. In fact, this is secret number three, even though I mentioned it at the beginning. Even though Jupiter shows very difficult things for him, he killed himself in a Jupiter sub-period. Nevertheless, Jupiter is still in what's called a Hamsa Yoga. And if you look at his D10, the sub-chart of great success, in fact, I will put it here in the main chart. Apologies to the South Indian uh, chart folks. In fact, not apologies. Let's just put it right here so everyone can enjoy this D10. In his D10, he has Jupiter also forming Hamsa Yoga, Vargotama, in his 10th house of, of career. Okay? So when he ran his Jupiter period, a book was written about him that made him world famous, Lust for Life. Movies were made about him with, um, as a result of that book with Kirk Douglas, one of the most famous actors, the father of Michael Douglas. And that began his massive fame, which he couldn't experience in his own lifetime due to the issues mentioned previously. So everything plays out in Vedic astrology, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever karma you have, whatever karma you do, will eventually play out. Now, you, Marilyn Monroe, if we look at Marilyn's chart, she also has a lot of afflictions, but also a lot of fame. Arguably, she became more famous after her lifetime than even during, even though she was very famous. Why? Because she ran, I guess I could pull up Marilyn's chart. Give me one second. Because she ran her Jupiter, and she died in her Jupiter here in the eighth house. This is Marilyn's chart. Had she lived through her Saturn period, her Saturn is massively powerful, exalted in massive Raja Yogas with Venus and wealth yogas and so forth, that she would have been even more famous had she lived. And of course, after her death, her fame grew. So similarly, the chart of Vincent van Gogh, those periods, even after his death, played out in the memory, the, the subconscious, unconscious memory of humanity. And these combos work. Now, if you believe in the Vedic uh, 
tradition of reincarnation. Certainly, whatever he reincarnated into, he will continue to experience this. Everything plays out. If you want to be a rock star in this lifetime, but you don't have the yogas for it, but still you put your effort into, you practice, you work, you try, and even though you're beaten down in your next lifetime, you're going to be reborn with the voice, with the talent, and so forth. This is the idea, the promise even, of uh, the theory of reincarnation, that no effort is wasted. Nothing you do is wasted. Everything matters. It may not come to fruition in this lifetime. It may not come to fruition even in the next lifetime. There are many stories from the Vedic tradition that say um, when a devotee you know, is just walking through the jungle and all of a sudden the goddess Kali appears, and he says, how have I deserved your grace that I just did a couple of mantras and here you are and you're granting me my wishes? She says, oh, you dummy, <laughs> you don't remember. But in your last 10 lifetimes, you worshipped me and you gave your life for me. And you had just a little bit left to do. And the moment you've completed those mantras, you completed your task and I'm here to grant you what you want. So this is the idea of no effort is wasted. So in the chart of Vincent van Gogh, bringing, bringing it all back here, um, I, I said at the beginning I would talk about relationships. And in a very real and historic way, his first love rejected him. He fell in love with a woman in London and he hid it for over a year. He kept it and it festered and it festered and it grew. Now, he's a very passionate man. Venus, Mars together, especially if both are super strong. Venus is exalted. Mars is Dick Bella. Gives tremendous passion. This is not necessarily the chart of a monk, especially since the ruler of his ninth house, Saturn, is debilitated. He will not have um, success through religion he will not even though he was very religious fanatic devout he was even rejected by the priests he was rejected by by the church rejected by his father who was a priest a clergyman he's a passionate man but that passion was repressed why the ruler of the seventh house is within one degree of ketu the ruler of the seventh house within one degree of Ketu in the nakshatra of Mula. Severe repression and rejection. As a result of that rejection, he was driven to religion. And he read the Bible feverishly. He threw out all his other stuff. He turned that passion into something to try to cope with rejection. Now, um, not to turn this into a, um, what do you call it? self-promotion but um this is why i feel relationships are so 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 important and having love in your life having the right person in your life this is why we've done two classes now the personal handicap divine love master class and the class we're currently teaching which is the remedies what to do if you have a chart like van gogh's now no guarantees that you can avoid hardship in your life. Everyone has to face hardship. But the tools that you have, the what can you do to deal with it? To, you know, if you have, if a hurricane comes and blows your house down, it, but if you have a hammer and nails and you have wood and you have bricks, you can rebuild your house. But if you have no tools, you're left bare and in the open and crying to God in the heavens, why? Similarly, with Vedic astrology, we have tools to deal with some of these difficult placements. And this is the point of the remedies class. Now, coming up, we have the Divine Love Masterclass Part 3. This is the final part, which is the compatibility section. And um, as always, we have uh, 
you know, special guests and I have uh, special gifts for our students, which are the full access to our compatibility software, which will allow you to pull a compatibility for any two charts for free based on the systems we teach. So you don't have to do it by hand. You don't have to do it manually. I mean, you can, you should to learn it, but then you can use the software to make it easy. That's free for everyone who joins our class. And truly, it's my belief that had Vincent been matched with someone who could have brought out his talents and minimize the personality and physical and emotional handicaps, that he could have had a better quality life. So in conclusion, when looking at a chart that has both fame and power, but also severe limitation, remember that everything plays out in Vedic astrology. Everything is cumulative, and it plays out according to the schedule given by the Dasha scheme. And in his case, he ran the full period of Venus, the full 20 years of Venus, he he had the he worked in the art world he was around rich people but none of it really came to him unfortunately partly because of his personality partly because of the rejection and love that he experienced and partly because um karma so uh if you have questions or comments about this chart i'm going to leave it at this uh, there's so much more that we can cover. But remember, Gulika is a shadow that runs a span. Um, and um, pay attention to it. The sign in the seventh house from Gulika, that, that lordship of that planet can also cast a shadow. These are things that you won't find in a lot of places, but they are absolutely, they have been found to be true in practice. Uh, and um, and everything accumulates. Everything plays out. Um, so I will leave you with this. Uh, I hope this was a useful exercise and we can look at other famous charts. Uh, in fact, if you have a chart that you want to look at, that you have questions about, just go ahead and leave a comment and uh, we'll do that. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time. Namaste.